No practice is bad practice, is the worst advice. I'm sure you've heard this before many times from other artists and it couldn't be more wrong. I've seen it all in all my years of teaching and there are certainly things that you can do that will hurt your progress. So let's take this week's YouTube art school class and go over what to avoid. Oh yikes, quickly class is starting. Alright, class is in session. Pay attention! These are seven types of practice you should most definitely avoid if you want to make sure you don't lose motivation along the way and progress as fast as possible. A lot of these might not seem so bad at first, which is why so many artists repeat them. But hopefully you won't after this. Here we go. The first one on the list is to just practice more. You see this useless piece of advice tossed around everywhere as if more of something that's not working will eventually make a difference. If you're not happy with your progress, the method is what should change, not doing more of the same. When you don't know what you're doing and you're just putting in the hours, at best you'll make insignificant progress that will only help to ruin your motivation, or worse, you'll develop bad habits you'll eventually have to unlearn. And bad habits take a lot of work to unlearn. If you're stuck, instead try looking for alternate techniques, study the theory on the subject, look into the art fundamentals and you should quickly get an understanding as to why something might not have been working. The second thing you must have heard before is to stop copying. Copying sounds bad and to be fair it is bad if you're trying to pass something you didn't make as your own but copying is at the root of all learning so you should most definitely copy. Copy from life or from photo references of course to build a strong and accurate visual library but if you've been working on your art fundamentals like gesture drawing, construction, perspective, anatomy, color theory, design, etc. You shouldn't hesitate to copy other artists as a learning exercise. It's super helpful to understand how others stylize anatomy, for example, or how they use colors in their art. It's a way to learn their recipes, essentially, just like cooking. It's a lot easier to learn a recipe and make it your own by adjusting it to your taste over time, rather than figuring out all the ingredients and the ratio of each on your own. Who does that? Well, don't do it for art either. When it comes to learning art, there's nothing better than copying. Very wise words. The third practice problem is one I mention to my students quite a bit when the topic of burnout comes up. Don't set your targets too high. It's normal to get more bold and try more advanced and technical drawings as you get better, but I've noticed often the increase in difficulty is faster than the increase in skills. When you try to draw or paint something that's well beyond your skill level, you might still eventually be able to power through and finish it, but not without having to climb through many metaphorical walls along the way. When the path from start to finish is hard and long, you don't get that happy feeling reward when you complete a piece as often. Sometimes there are so many walls in your way that you'll just give up or burn out completely. Instead, try setting the difficulty level way lower to something that you can almost surely crush. Don't make it too easy, of course, or else you won't get any better, but plan drawings that will feel like they won't take too long and are mostly well within your comfort zone. If you're planning a big drawing with like five characters, maybe dial it back to one or two and, and give yourself the option to add more if you're really into it later. Aim small and expand from there if needed. That's much more rewarding than aiming too big and dialing things back or just straight up stopping and giving up. The first option leaves you feeling good about yourself and the other feels bad. Art should feel good. Nothing feels better than getting better at something and if you need help getting better at art, well, you should definitely check out my art program. My guarantee is that by the end, you'll be able to draw anything your mind can imagine. Check out the deets with the link in the video description and make sure that you use the coupon down there as well for the biggest discount of the year. You have until the end of the month, so a couple more days left. Check it out. The fourth practice fail is to get attached to your drawings or parts of your drawings as you work on them. Now I will say I definitely was guilty of that when I was younger as most artists do I'm sure. You spend a lot of time on a piece, struggle a bunch and it slowly starts to feel like your baby almost. This makes it particularly hard to erase certain parts and redo them even though that's what might be best for the drawing. I learned to deal with this the hard way when I started working in the game industry and I had to answer to an art director for the first time in my life. Suddenly, it was my job to rework concepts, try alternatives, completely scrap ideas even and start from scratch. I had to let go of my feelings during the process and develop the mentality that everything is temporary until the piece is done and approved. I guarantee you it gets easier with time and the more you do it, 
usually the better your art gets. Leave feelings out of the process as much as possible. Don't determine what stays and what goes by how much time you spent on it, only by how good it really is. And now the fifth practice mistake is to practice without a clear goal. Nobody plans a trip without a destination in mind, right? Unless you're crazy, so don't do that with your art either. Set some goals for yourself, like learning some anatomy and practicing gesture drawing with the goal to eventually draw your original character in a cool pose, for example. Whatever your goal might be. Studies without a goal are easily forgotten, so try giving a bigger, more tangible context to what you're doing. Instead of just randomly doing color studies or practicing perspective, come up with a project that will require those skills you might not have yet. It could also be as simple as wanting to build a portfolio of 10 to 15 pieces by a certain date, just random numbers, but whatever it is, always have a goal. The sixth drawing practice that actually makes you worse is to practice drawing things you don't enjoy. This goes for studies too. Always, always try to find an angle that's fun for you. I'm sure you've heard before that you should practice this or that even if you don't enjoy it because it's important, but none of that matters if you're heading straight for burnout. It's very simple. Over time, we naturally do more of what we enjoy and less of what we don't. We're pretty basic creatures. Now, let's say you suck at anatomy because you hate studying that, and as a result, your characters look like deformed sausages. You probably don't like that either. The trick is to find just the right amount of anatomy to study to help yourself slightly improve your results but not past the point where things aren't fun. Don't dive into a six months intensive anatomy study session, unless that's fun for you, obviously. Instead, try looking into it just a little bit. Find a little nugget of information that will help make your art like 5% better. When your character actually starts to look better, the anatomy study or whatever it is you're studying will slowly become more palatable. Over time, those 5% will add up. Always focus on what's fun. This seems like such an obvious thing to say, yet it's one of the things that I repeat the most to art students. And then finally, the last drawing advice to avoid. I briefly mentioned in the intro is that no practice is bad practice. I can understand the logic, but it just doesn't work with art. You can 100% practice things that will not benefit you in any way. The best example is to practice drawing from imagination and never use reference. That's the best way to go nowhere as an artist. Drawing from imagination by itself isn't even real. Unless you were blind from birth, you're really only drawing from what you've seen and memorized so far. The difference between someone who's actually walking through life, seeing things around them, like casually, and maybe memorizing a few things left and right, versus someone who's actively observing their surroundings, actively observing real life references or photo references, and trying to get better by studying the subjects, is just going to be massive. The first one will make baby steps, while the second one will make leaps and bounds. Bad practice is learning without a structure, without a teacher. All things that, if done right, will have a massive impact on your progress. Bad practice is bad practice. Good practice is good practice. And that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. Let me know if you have any other practice fails that you think are important to mention. Maybe I'll use it as content for a future video. And let me know if that was helpful. Uh, one more thing, if you haven't yet, you can go ahead and grab my free brush pack with the link in the video description. They're quite tasty. All right, I'll see you next week's class. Don't be late.